Tonight on Nerd News Now, what scares you for Halloween? Have you ever passed out watching a Netflix show? I know I have, and it usually says, Mark, are you still watching that? And I'm like, don't judge me. Also, Doctor Who is up and running. We'll see what Ashford thinks about that and where the series might go. And we'll also be checking out some cool stuff coming up this weekend, like Brickfest and Dallas Fan Days in Irving. Stay tuned for all that and more on Nerd News Now. Hey, and welcome to Nerd News Now for October 17th, 2018. I'm Mark, along, as always, with Miss Jen and Ashford. Uh, guys, there's not a lot going on today. Uh, the only news is the same news there's been for two weeks, which Venom won box office again. Yes, it did. So, And I know you got to see it. Uh, I still haven't seen it yet. So I don't know. Uh, you know, past that, it, it's very interesting to me that it's done this two weeks in a row. And I just think it's going to keep steamrolling to have them create more and more stuff right right and we've had like a little bit of news about the morbius and some craven stuff so i'm just wondering at what point we're going to get more and more villains out there uh but other than that you know so it defeated lady gaga you know twice in a row but critically you know it's been getting panned you know a little bit uh, sure. But but it still has found like that fan base because a lot of people like I'm really guilty of just bashing uh, Suicide Squad when it came out, but a lot of people like to go to Redbox and watch that and like I don't I don't get this part, but a lot of people are like, oh, that's the film we picked out for our family night, and I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> yeah. not a family movie. Oh well, my gosh. exactly, but I mean, I guess, <laughs> but that happens, right? I mean, sure. you know, so people, it's a popcorn flick. Mm -hmm. That that's what that is. Uh, but now, uh, looking forward to movies, we're going to have all the, you know, Academy Award caliber, mm -hmm. Oscar caliber stuff uh, coming out. Um, but first, we're going to have Halloween. Now, are you, and, and when I say Halloween, I mean the movie, the not movie. the holiday, but also the holiday and not the movie. So, do you guys like scary movies? Uh, not with real people. If they're scary with, like creepy creatures or in, like I draw the line at dolls and clowns those I like but I really don't like like slasher films not my thing most horror movies I watched was when I was a kid and I was along with my brother so I was mm -hmm. but now as an adult I don't seek them out but I, I respect the genre and I respect those people where uh, like there's certain rules to it let the right one in like you need to know yeah. like the Dracula has to be invited into your home. You can't mm -hmm. just walk in. So I was like, oh, okay, I like the little edicts that they have there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a lot of that stuff just creeps me out. And there's, like, movies that people throw in the horror category, like Gremlins. I don't really consider that a horror movie, I guess, because it didn't scare me as a kid because of Gizmo. So that like that lighthearted it's nature. And it's comedic a little bit. Sure. Yeah, and then but then you also had like the B level movies like Critters, where they're oh. all like demonic type, you know, yes. like all gremlins, no fluff, no literal fluff, no gizmo, uh, no gizmo being Rambo and jumping like Barbie pink Corvette cars <laughs> over dogs <laughs> and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I don't really care for that stuff. But given that it's October, you know, it's finally cold here now. Uh, a lot of people kind of look towards that to build up for the holiday spirit of Halloween. Uh, we have a few things coming out that people are really looking forward to. So along with the the new Halloween movie with Jamie Lee Curtis, which, by the way, is just going to jump straight from the 1978 version to this version. Ah. So it's basically just going to be 40 years later. You cut out all the stuff in between. You cut out the... Uh, what was the third one called? Like witches, something that no one no one remembers likes or remembers. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure some people like everything, right? Yeah. But uh, but what I'm looking forward to on Netflix is. Do you guys watch Riverdale? Uh, I am I'm tangentially aware of it. I I watched the first season. Well, but especially from the comic single, uh, have did you ever come across the series, um, the Chilling Tales of Sabrina? 
Absolutely. Okay, so based off of that iteration of Sabrina, not the Melissa Joan Hart and the cute talking cat, but now there's going to be like the darker level of that. It's the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It's going to be on Netflix. The trailer dropped. It is just awesome. And no body hunts? No. Oh, man. Now, but uh, Michelle Gomez from Doctor Who is in Oh, it. yeah. Now, I don't think she's playing one of the aunts or aunts of her to both ways. Yes. But, you know, there's going to be some high-level acting, high-level effects. Mm -hmm. And at some point, they're hoping that it crosses over with Riverdale. Now, this could happen because ever since season one, there was sort of like little hints tossed out that they might go with the Afterlife of Archie storyline, yes. which is like, was really big. And that was basically where Jughead's dog Porkchop was patient zero, bit Jughead. Yep. And he kind of like humanized the zombie virus. Mm -hmm. And then they basically, I guess Archie kind of kept him alive. You know, as a pet for, I mean, just sort of yeah. like Shaun of the Dead. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, so that's going to be happening. That's going to be interesting. Um, and people just love that type of stuff, you know, because it's like, I guess it's like the, the witchcraft element. But then also you have like, a, you know, a girl having to grow up and make a decision like, mm -hmm. do I go down this path? Do I go down that path? Do I choose this or do I choose... You know, maybe I just want to go to the mall shop with this boy over here. Because it still has that, even though it's like... Right. Even though Riverdale, you know, is in 2018, dealing with 2018 problems, there is still, like, the Pop Steiner and mall shop aspect right. of all of this. And that's what's kind of genius about the Archie series is... And they credit, you know, the comics uh, from probably seven, eight years ago that took it on a more serious turn. Yeah, they're very because, adult, actually. Yeah. Because when I was a kid, it was just, I just remember Archie's Digest, like the little yes. ones on the end, uh, under the tabloids, and that was all just super lighthearted stuff. But because comics were able to take that to a more adult, maybe a little bit darker place, but, it, but the comics were never graphic until Afterlife with Archie. And then obviously those became very graphic because yeah. of flesh eating zombies. Um, but it's also kind of, I think a lot of people understand especially with DC and Marvel over the years, that these are different universes. So no it's one clear. so no one's out there going, what did they do to my Archie? Right. And some people might be, but it's like you can pick up the other comic mm -hmm. for that. Like everything is still going strong. And then the Mark Wade, you know, relaunch from a couple of years yeah. back, that's the more traditional Archie and Riverdale. But with this Sabrina, I think it's really going to take a step toward the dark, the supernatural. And speaking of that, um, that the more dark and supernatural stuff, the haunting of Hill House is crazy, y'all. I don't know if, if you've seen this, but this is Netflix number one show this week. It's based on the 1959 horror novel, and it's just about a haunted house, but it's really good and it's really grabbing people and making them jump. I, I read now, I always take this with a grain of salt, but. I saw a couple of articles that said people were like throwing up and passing Ooh. out in their living room, right? Now, I remember the previous time this happened, it wasn't a horror movie at all. It was that 127 Hours with James Franco based on the true story where the guy was like spelunking, got caught between the cliff and had to cut his oh. arm off. And in yeah. that scene, people were mm -hmm. passing out allegedly. Has anything ever been so scary or so grotesque that you passed out? Pass like out, like, no. t like TV, TV wise, like no. watching a show, fainting at a show. No, it was the most uncomfortable watching John Carpenter is the thing. Okay, and that see that see that's a movie. If we we're going to talk about movies that like really capture sort of like the cold and Halloween spirit, mm -hmm. for me that's one. Yeah. I mean, obviously it takes place on Arctic base. Yes. Um, but no help for them at all. No, no help. <laughs> And, uh, you know, there's a an art company uh, that mostly does, like, vinyl and posters based out of Austin called Mondo. Are yeah. you all familiar with Mondo? Absolutely no Mondo. So they're, they have recently delved into board games. Mm -hmm. And last year, uh, their first board game release was The Thing. Yes. And I actually did recently, a couple months back, play that with a group of friends. 
Does it capture the the terror? Of yeah, I have. I, yeah, I have no. I don't have those friends anymore. <laughs> like it basically just ruins your friendships. It, it really does. It, it was a really. It's a oh, really it a backstabbing intense. One? It's a backstabbing one because oh. basically what happens. Let's say you know it's it's for players like you know three to eight, uh, not age, not, <laughs> not age appropriate, but like three to eight players. And what you do, the first thing you do. Mm-hmm is you draw a card and it tells you, you know, it's like the blood test card if you're infected or not. And basically, you do not show that card till the end. But the caveat is, even if you get that card the first time, you have to, uh, you, at some point, if they draw the right card, or if you get to a certain point of the game, you have to do another blood test. So you can actually have two cards. One can be infected and one can be not. But obviously, once you're infected... You can't be uninfected. Mm-hmm. And if the first card you drew was uninfected, but the second one's infected, then you're infected. And and I tried my best. I was not infected, but I cannot convince them to take me as one of three people to go on the helicopter at the end. So we lost. Wow. <laughs> or they won. I mean, because basically that's what it does. You know, yeah. it, it's like... Uh, there's all these games right now where it's like the secret identity and you're, you know, trying to coax it out of everyone. You have all these red herrings, the, Mm -hmm. yeah, the werewolf. Um, and yeah, it was really crazy. So any movies like that where it just builds up that intensity, I think those are perfect for Halloween. Um, but yeah, so we have Sabrina, we have, you know, Halloween 40 years later and then we have The Haunting of Hill House. So mm-hmm. just if you watch The Haunting of Hill House, just make sure you have lots of pillows and buckets lying around, apparently. I don't know, because like, <laughs> I'm just like, see, the way I would watch it is just like this. Yep. I mean, I think you know, it's required. I, some people, I guess some people just uh, love to test their limits. But I mean, yeah. if, I, if I really thought that someone, something was going to make me that uncomfortable, I'm just gonna be like looking down at my phone or something. Yeah, you know. And I live especially. alone, so I don't even want to risk it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like to watch horror movies just with the blinds up and the lights on, you know. Yeah. But that's me. A lot of people it's it takes. It, well, <laughs> but if it's but if you get through it, you get through it. Yeah. Right, is the way to look at it. Because the other option is just I don't want to do it. And there are now this one this show is being highly critically acclaimed like i'm sure it will be up for some emmys and for some people's choice awards and for some golden globes a lot of times in the horror genre you do not see that yeah no, they you know it's they very a lot. yeah they get panned it's it's b level but i think i think netflix is on to something i think mm-hmm. sony may be on to something even though venom's getting panned right now at some point they're going to make one that you know is critically acclaimed as well, and they're just because at the end of the day, as far as Hollywood, they're like, well, we can just make money off this. <laughs> I mean, you know, the yeah, horror yeah. genre. So, so outside of so, it seems like none of us really like the scary stuff. Mm-hmm. So, what else are you guys doing to prepare for Halloween? You're a big Halloween person, Miss G. I'm not. I actually celebrate Dia de los Muertos. Okay, well, what do you do to celebrate that then? <laughs> oh, I love candy skulls and all that kind of stuff. My decorations are all that sugar skulls, stuff. right? I mean, yep. and those have really come into popularity to the point where it's like I, I know from following baseball, they have a lot of theme nights, and I know like the Oakland A's had a theme night. Do they really do it? It's like yeah, oh, oh yeah. Where there's a sugar skull bobblehead for sure, and uh, several teams have done that. Yes. I'm not sure if any of the Houston teams had a giveaway, but I have seen plenty of like Astro Sugar Soul shirts. So you know, I know I know they're out there. What's interesting about Halloween, especially uh like the past fifteen years, you know, with us we like geek culture, we like mm-hmm. the cosplay, get into comic books and like people might look at you like, What is that about? Yeah. But then those same people <laughs> spend four thousand to ten thousand dollars <laughs> on Halloween. Yep. And go all out, mm-hmm. right? So it's kind of like, I'm doing this throughout the year, but you're doing more on the equivalent of this uh, three-week tour where we got a Halloween party, but then Halloween falls on a Tuesday, so we're doing it the weekend before, but then we have some people who come come to my Halloween party, so we're doing it the November 2nd, but then it also fell on a Saturday, but it was Johnny's birthday. So <laughs> after a while, it's like someone, they've gone to... 10 different Halloween parties within a four-week span. Yes. And they'll yeah. make, like, you know, 
I have a good friend who loves Halloween enough that she actually created, she made a full-scale black pearl on her front yard one year. And she's also cre recreated Narnia in her front yard where you had to go through <laughs> the wardrobe to get into her yard. Yeah, because for a lot of people, that's their Christmas as far as, yeah. like, they, yes. they would rather spend all that time and resources decorating for that than, you know, Christmas lights in the Winter Wonderland. They're building haunted houses. Yes. And then, you know, the theme parks like Disney and Universal, they have probably, what, six weeks worth around. A lot. And they spend a lot of time and money and effort mm -hmm. on Halloween. I and mean, you people have go show, there for that. And you have shows like Walking Dead where people are going on YouTube to look up how to do zombie makeup. So mm -hmm. it's, it's getting to a point where it's this yearly thing. Like, it's year-round. All this stuff. Yeah. Um, so... That kind of concludes the Halloween part, um, but Ashford, you were not here last week, right? and I know you've been really looking forward to Doctor Who, right? and so now it's been on the air two weeks in a row, right? Yes. And the, the first the first airing, they simulcasted it, so we saw it at the same exact time as they did across the pond, and now it airs, was it airs 7 p.m. our time on yes, Sunday? Yes, Sunday night. Uh, so this upcoming Sunday, episode three is coming up. What have you, just kind of run us through what you thought about the first two episodes. The first two episodes, pretty cool. You know, we, there was all this question about what it, would it be like to have a woman play the doctor. Mm -hmm. It was the same. Yeah. You know, it's, it, she demonstrated the qualities that the doctor has. Um, I'm excited about the show. One, I got to the premiere of the show without dying because I was just scared, like, I'm going to die before they premiere the show, and I didn't die. So, yeah, I saw it. First two episodes, uh, they're lighthearted. Uh, they're designed for, if you've never watched Doctor Who, but you've heard a lot about it, you can come in, and are they making references to the past? Yeah. Yes, but it's not throwing you off or anything like that. And I'm just excited about the whole thing of having multiple companions, mm -hmm. but we're supposed to call them friends. Her friends and uh, Jody Whitaker. She's quirky. She's uh, taking control. Uh, I like the fact that she's making some mistakes oh. that leads to the plot going forward. But um, you know, you guys go out and watch the first two episodes, or um, contact us on uh, Twitter or Facebook with Kingdom of Geekdom. But for the third episode, and the stills are out there, so this isn't a spoiler because I've never seen the third episode. But uh, you know, the first episode, they're in the present. 2018. And then the next episode, they're in the future. Because that's what this show is supposed mm -hmm. to be about. Yeah. You're supposed to go forward, back, and sideways. Whatever yeah. that means. And then on the third episode, they're going to visit Rosa Parks. Oh, so you wow. got to think about it like a show where you can go back in the past. You know, it's avoided some of that, like, ooh, this can get heavy. Do we want to talk about this? Right? So like something like Rosa Parks is like, you know, with Doctor Who, they used to have something called Pure Historicals, where we're going to go back in the past. There won't be any monsters or anything like that. It's just we're in the past and we're just interacting with Napoleon. And then they did, they started going into what they call pseudo historicals where, you know, we're back during uh, Normandy, you know, 1456 or whatever, mm -hmm. but then a monster pops up. So that's a pseudo historical. I don't know how much they want to play around with. The civil rights movement. Something as important as that. Yeah. yeah so, but I I commend the the show for, yeah. You got a time travel show, and you're not really dealing with like some real hardcore issues. So um, I'm excited about what's going to happen. They're going to go to America, mm -hmm. so to see you know British some British company handle something that's really deep and ingrained in like the South yeah. of the United States. Let's see where they go with that. I like that. I didn't hear that yet. Now, they used to, like you were saying, like the almost straight historical, they used to use that as a teaching tool, right? So right. it would be nice if they kind of got back to that, because they hadn't really done that since, I mean, what, the first or second doctor, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. uh, when you're referencing the stuff where they, you know, like they run into the Globe Theater and Shakespeare's there, and then they got to fight like a demon bat or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, but with this, with this storyline, this will be very interesting, because it's going to set a tone for... Can we do this, make it fun and educational right. at the same time while trying to incorporate a new doctor who also happens to be the first female doctor? Um, and you were wondering about how they were going to have her um, 
you know, initially go about her business because we, we know that all the doctors mess up, right? Yeah. But because, like, Doctor Who is sort of an aloof individual that stumbles into town and, it, like, kind of Barney Fife's his or now her way out of situations. So I think that they took the best possible path by, you know, for lack of better words, making her be human and making mistakes. Yes. You know, put both hearts into it. I love it. But, but, uh, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Yeah. I just think that that, uh, it's, it's a very good opportunity because, uh, if we could learn something as well as be entertained, that's something not a lot of shows have right now. Yeah. And, um, and the first episode, the doctor mentions that she says, I know exactly who I am. I'm the doctor sorting out fair play throughout the universe. And just think about, you know, a show that you're watching when they know kids are watching, what, what are they saying? So, it, it was just fun knowing that that's the message they want to get across there when they know kids are watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other shows you guys are up on right now? Oh, gosh. Uh, Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't really fit the Nerd News Now format. but Come on, there's nerds winning that game all the time. Well, and I, and I will say, like, actually, the uh, first or second episode of The Simpsons this season was sort of like an homage to that. So and and also people at my job, I mean they bet on anything, but people at my job they'll have like a survivor fantasy draft. Wow! So it actually is there is actually a very uh, nerdy aspect to that show because there's people that have seen every episode. They know all the games. They know like oh this person's doing this wrong or this person's doing this wrong, and they like either gain from what I've seen. Uh, most of the time they gain like a hatred for the characters. <laughs> I mean, sometimes yeah. like some of the people are endearing, but I think most of the time it's like, I don't like that person. And they're using all these underhanded techniques, but that's how you play that game, right? Honestly, so. it is the ultimate strategy role playing game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot um, of action. Yeah. yeah. Those yeah. people aren't who they are in that game. They are playing parts. LARPing. It's LARPing. They're LARPing. Was American Gladiators like LARPing? That was. No. Was just, no. American Gladiator was... Pugil sticks. No. no I mean, that's American kind of LARPing, Gladiator though. was a real sport. Yeah. Darn it. Gemini and... Uh, was it not, n- Nitrate? Yeah. What was it? Nitro. 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 Nitro, yeah. Nitro yeah. Gemini. Nitro. And what was the third dude? <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, they had. They, 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 it was of, real. they rotated. It came on Sunday I mean, nights. They almost sounded like Mega Man villains. It, I got them mixed up. Now, what about this? There was a Nightmare on M Street television show. Yes. And there was one where a claw came out of the bed and sucked the girl in. This yep. was the 80s, a television show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I just want to talk about that. Okay. And then the Crypt Keeper. I mean, Tales from the Crypt. Oh for, my gosh. Since we're talking about Halloween. Yeah, yeah that's so we circle back to Halloween. That's but again, good. why was I watching that? It's because <laughs> my brother had to watch me, and then I'm watching what he's watching. Yeah. But then once I became an adult, I stopped messing with that stuff. <laughs> Well, there's just so much right now. I mean, we've already talked about this a lot as far as uh, during the summer there was nothing, so you went outside, and then you, you know, you're watching TGI Friday every Friday night starting at 7, but now it's just there's a new show every day. Oh, yeah. With, you know, yeah. and, uh, but I'm looking forward to Daredevil, but that is this Friday, so. Sometimes. I'm going to take one for the team. I don't want to binge watch it, but I guess I'm going to have to binge watch it Liar. so that I can talk to. about it for all three of us. No, I do want to. Um, and I also want to take a break right now, and then we're going to come back and talk about comics this week on Nerd News Now. Football season is here, and Woodlands Online Sports is back better than ever. Watch all the action on KVQT21 Houston and woodlandsonline.com. For home repairs, call John Moore, where quality is guaranteed. If the problem returns, so will we. No extra charge. Call John, get more. 730-2525. All right, welcome back to Nerd News Now for October 17th, 2018. We're going to talk about comics. And for comics, we're going to go to our source, which is Miss Jen. So, Miss Jen, what uh, top three this week, what do you recommend? Okay, so there's lots of stuff. I'm just going to go just do just, DC because it's so okay. contrary to my normal way of being since I'm a Marvel girl. Sorry. 
Uh, but I will tell you that DC's trying to catch my heart because they're doing three main storylines that are going through right now. So uh, in tying together with all of the fervor for everything that is uh, Aquaman, they're doing a, st a storyline called Drowned Earth that's kind of running through a couple of the titles. And it's going to be a short little uh, event. I think there's only like five or six issues that are tied to it. And then they're also doing something called The Witching Hour that's running through Justice League Dark and Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, and that's really like super creepy looking. And that's a great storyline. But the big storyline that everyone's following right now is the Batman Nightwing storyline. Because uh, two or three weeks ago, KG Beast who is an assassin, shoots Nightwing in the head. And now we've got a Nightwing who is totally, like, he's he's no longer Dick Grayson. He now goes by Rick Grayson because he has no connection to that person anymore. That Dick Grayson is dead for all intents and purposes. And now we're having a storyline where Batman is after KG Beast in his storyline. And then in Nightwing's books, you're following him trying to figure his own self out. Now he's driving a taxi cab. Mm. Where are we going from here? I don't know, but see, you never thought you'd see me talk about DC with love. <laughs> DC, you're giving me so much good stuff. Thank you for converting me. And well, there's one more thing that I hope they give you, and that's going to be in November with the Shazam book. Yes. Written by Jeff Johns, artwork by Dale Eaglesham. He's uh, currently working on the Terrifics, and his art is just magnificent. Yes. And uh, most of the Shazam stuff that I've read, have been by Jeff Johns. So yes. Jeff Johns doing a monthly. I'm excited about this. Yeah, everything that Jeff touches is like gold. Like he really lives and breathes DC. And there's certain things that Jeff Johns write where I don't like the direction, but the writing is there. Mm -hmm. Like he did a Batman Year One, or no, Batman Earth One, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I, the story was great. I just didn't like what they were doing, but the writing was there. So. Um, even with the countdown, yep. um, I'm enjoying reading it. It's a good, you know, I don't know if I agree with everything going on, but the boy can write. So yes. I'm hoping that he writes, I'm scared that, you know, when, you know, a lot of times you see Billy Batson and yeah. he's acting like just a normal kid. He's not being kiddie, mm -hmm. but then they'll Shazam him. And then you see Shazam acting like a kid. Like, wait a minute. When he was Billy, he was that like a, a little right. kid. So. I hope they do the right thing with that, but I'm looking forward to them putting my pull box hashtag that. Yes, <laughs> pull boxes. And I know Ashford, you have a a real appreciation of Jeff Johns because of he was basically able to take Green Lantern, who of course had been a big DC superstar, you know, prior '60s, '70s, '80s, but he was able to take him back to the forefront with all the darkest night brightest day stuff yeah i mean basically yeah when jeff johns when basically like in 2004 2005 2006 when he was like i'm going to remake dc in my image you know you could say that hal jordan at that time was maybe a bc less character mm -hmm. where he pimped that pen that script and made hal jordan the face of dc for a while they even made the movie and the movie wasn't yeah. good but even when the movie sucked, that comic was still number one. Like it, because yep. you can't deny the writing. Like I don't like how Jordan, but the stream of consciousness that was going on throughout all those trades, oh, it was amazing. And then, you know, some people may not agree with it, but he also wrote an awesome JSA, Jeff Johns. So yeah. I didn't get any money for that. But. I think Green Lantern number one, the new launch, comes in two weeks. Yeah, in two weeks. So there's that to look forward to. We'll see if we like where they go with that direction. And I think all of us have our favorite writers. So whenever we see any character that's sort of like picked up by them, like Gail Simone drawing Plastic Man and Domino right now, and those instantly make those characters interesting to me. Yeah. Because I know that she's going to put something extra behind it. Even if I, like I remember Plastic Man being one of the first superhero things I watched, the, the cartoon uh, way back. Um, and then Domino, I've known about, you know, since X Force, and then I thought Zazzy Beats' portrayal for Deadpool Two was awesome. But it just gives you like extra layers, like when when you can go back, because obviously Shazam has been around for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but someone like Jeff Johns coming and and making him, you know, relevant is a bad term because you always have someone out there that's like 
just waiting to see what Shazam does next. But, but trending. trending. Yeah. Yeah. Especially now, obviously, with the movie with Zachary yeah. Levi coming out, you know, we we know that they tie this stuff in. Like, yeah. they do this on purpose to, like, hey, let's boost up this character so that you're interested, and then you go to the movie, and then because of the movie, there's now there's new trades to buy and all that stuff. But that doesn't mean the tie-ins have to be good. So when they're good, it's even better. Mm-hmm. And when you have someone like Jeff Johns writing it, it's going to be good. We'll just see if he's focused since he's doing all this executive work with TV. Are you yeah. focused enough to write a monthly book? I think so. Mm. The other weird things that have started to happen is, okay, so you guys have seen the most recent trailer for the Spider-Man. Yes. Uh, it has Spider-Ham. Yes. Yes. And Voiced now, by John Mulaney. All of those back issues now are hot. Oh, yeah. yeah. The ones you couldn't give away are yeah. now hot. <laughs> yeah. And, and and that happens with like all the Netflix shows. Anytime a character basically goes over to a different form of media, that those books get snatched up. I mean, books you cannot give away. Like, do you remember like Venom Lethal Protector? Those red foil covers. Yep, you can get them from Sam like, all day long at every cover for five dollars. <laughs> yeah. Signed. And now it's just like you know ten times the price. Yep. So, um, but that's what makes all this fun is because I, I do like that people respect and want to read the source material now sometimes mm-hmm. it might be like a cash grab like oh I'm, I'm investing in this book to hope that it gains in value because of this movie and that's fun too and that's it's fun too that's i mean it's yeah. part, part of it you know with all the variants and stuff and the print runs and all this part of it is you know investing it's like mm-hmm. playing the stock market but it's got pretty pictures you know so uh is there any other comics Coming out that you guys are looking forward to? Let's see. Coming out, I don't know. This week, there were some cool ones that are um, that are out there that people are going to probably be hunting down a lot. Uh, Marvel's got some uh, Venom. Venom's never had an annual. And their first annual comes out this week. It's a standalone story, so it's easy to pick up and jump into. So for people that just watch the movie and they're like, I don't know where to start Venom. It's a good place. And for me, you, Lord knows you're not going to find any Donny Cates back issues. So no, you're, you're not. not getting there. And for me personally, I just read Fantastic Four number one this past weekend. Oh, you so I wanted to so badly. Yeah. Okay. So it's only at two. It hasn't gotten to three yet. No. So I'm ready to get caught up on Fantastic yeah. Four number two. And I, I actually enjoy X Men Red. So yes, mm-hmm. fun team. And the X Men Black is out. Are, so are they going to be pulling this back at any point? Because we've had X Men blue, gold, red, yellow, maybe yellow, oh, but so black. But it all culminates are, in one thing. So all of them will, have okay. ended except for red. Okay. X Men Black are all single shot issues. You're not going to see them ever again. Okay. And that features the villains, correct? Villains okay. only. And then it's going to come all the way back around, and you're going to uncanny X Men. So we're going back to our old love roots. So we get to get the. I don't know what the team's going to be. The team's starting to get uh, shown a little bit at a time, which is kind of cool. They're also doing that same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy as Donnie Cates like teases that out. Or <laughs> it's kind of crazy. And if you have a cool comic book store, if you go there now, they can give you a booklet about what's going on with X Men. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Marvel's see, nice about providing those things. And see, I love all this stuff, and I can't keep up. And that's why, and that's why we're trying to provide all you guys <laughs> with all the nerd news now, right? Um, and the other thing we're trying to provide is anytime there's a cool event. We're gonna try to get there. You went to you went all the way to New York and gave us cool. I footage. delivered the goods. Be sure to check out that video of Miss Jen in New York on Woodlands Online. Uh, I'm going to Fan Expo, uh, Dallas Fan Days, uh, which is put on by a company named Fan Expo. They do the big Dallas Comic Con uh, earlier in the year, and then they do this Dallas Fan Days. Uh, that's gonna be cool. It's gonna be in Irving at the Convention Center. Ashford and I have been there a number of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Smith is the big one there, and I hope he shows up yeah. because I've tried to meet him four times. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I've met doctors. I'm. I think when you're a collector, it's easy to be a completionist. Uh, and I've met doctors five, six, seven, eight, nine, and twelve. Oh, you've got a big hole gap. No, not not nine, ten. Oh, I just misspoke. Christopher Eccleston. He's he he just now starting to do shows. He's starting to do shows. He will. Good. Yeah. Good. And then obviously Jody Whitaker hasn't done any yet that aren't, you know, the big ones. Yeah. But uh 
but no, that'll be cool. And then uh, some of uh, some TV legends like uh, uh, Jaleel White, Steve Urkel, he's going to be there, and oh, Cor- yeah. Corbin Burnson, he was the the dad on Psych, and but other people oh, know wow. him as. Other people know him as, you know, Q2. Mm-hmm. And, of course, he had a big run on L.A. Law. Um, and then John Delancey, Q1. So you got some Trekkie, and, and along with them from the movies, Carl Urban. Um, also, he was Judge He's Dredd. He's totally the law. Yeah. And then the original Buffy, Christy Swanson. Wow. And they're going to be doing, actually, a screening at Alamo Draft House where she's introducing that movie, which I've never seen, so maybe I should go see it. Because if you're going to yeah. see it, why not see Always her be do introduced the draft house with a the star? Draft house. Oh yeah, but she's going to be doing. I don't know if it's going to be a Q and A, but she'll be introducing oh, yeah. the movie. And have you guys done an escape room? I, no. Yes, you uh, have uh, done an escape uh, room. Uh, a very like a, one, uh, like work. a work one, right? Yeah, like kind not, of bonding experience yes. time one. So there's a company um, that is actually putting on escape rooms at the convention center. So I guess they come in and they build out, you know. A conference room or whatever, and it's Harry Potter themed. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing: I want to check it out, but I'm not escaping because I don't know Harry Potter. I've seen yeah. like uh, four and a half Harry Potter movies. You know what's wild is that you know, as far as the books, Harry Potter came out in the late '90s, mm-hmm. and it keeps doing these waves where it comes and then yep. it goes away, mm-hmm. and then it comes back, and then it go- and like I've been hearing about Harry Potter nonstop for like two years. Gosh, for me, yeah. it's been like since my kids were born. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think that's something that's going to go away anytime soon because mm-hmm. people have such a fervor for it. And if they're going to be basing, you know, especially if you can go do events or screenings, I mean, you can have like marathons of all this stuff. Yeah, the merchandise is there forever. We have so, fantastic beasts now. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't think they're going to stop with those either. I don't think they're going to stop. Yeah. I don't think they're going to stop. Uh, they certainly stop. Have not stopped. Uh, Making Lego sets of all this stuff. And speaking of Legos, yes. we're, gonna, we're also going to be covering Brickfest. Denmark. No, it's not. Well, Denmark. it's not in Denmark, but that's where. But Legos are in Denmark. <laughs> we're going to Denmark? Yeah. Excellent. It's not going to be in Denmark. It's going to be in Houston at the NRG, also mm-hmm. this weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um, mm-hmm. Now, this is going to be interesting because people love Legos. Yeah. I mean, they love them. Even with all like the the retail stores, the brick and mortar stuff going out of business, the Lego store is still a staple of most malls, including the one in the Woodlands. They always have these building events. They always have you know VIP deals and special sets. Uh, they have this awesome like two hundred dollar Voltron set yes. where you can oh. indi- you can individually build the lions, and you don't even have to really deconstruct them; you just piece them together. So I would love to go to that if I weren't in Dallas, but we'll have some someone covering that uh did you guys ever were you into legos no i'm horrible no because i no i admire people who know how to do it but i just cannot do it and you you brought a voltron do you remember what's it called trans rz no oh is that like like the gobot version of voltron uh, (laughs) be careful be careful i think i'm mispronouncing it but it Remember, like, Voltron came out, like, late 70s? Like no, you're not talking about ago. Robotech, are you? No, no, no. no this okay. is, look it up, and it's something like it's almost like Voltron, but it shoots a fist out. There's going to be so many people writing in about that. But, oh, go, keep going. Legos. <laughs> but no, I'm horrible at Legos. Yeah. I mean, I'm horrible at them just because I'm afraid to step on them. Like, that's probably the... There's two really painful things to step on, a dead wasp and a Lego. Mm. That's just from my experience. I'm sure there's a lot of other painful mm-hmm. stuff to step on. Guys, I can't even... Uh, I, I can't even screw a top back onto a water cap, let alone put together Legos that looks like a something. Yeah, I always felt like Legos were like um, the the jumping on point for future engineers. Yes. Because <laughs> I could see that in my kids where they were just like, they were not when they were building like the sets that were like the set things, mm-hmm. but the, ones, the loose Legos when we were like, hey, let's build an underwater or whatever. And they would come up with like this crazy contraptions. My youngest actually has made like moving machines where you like he can make I don't know I don't even know how he did it but it was just like that is an amazing piece of art. Mm-hmm. I have a zero spatial intelligence, which is one of the main seven types they've been adding on to all the different types of intelligence since the initial study was done back in like the fifties or whatever. But spatial intelligence is the number one thing you need to be 
uh, in Engineer, I don't have it, so maybe that's why I'm bad at Legos. Well, that makes sense, the spatial thing. But, uh, it's going to be fun. So, we're going to be covering that. I'll be in Dallas, and then we'll uh, be back next week with, uh, I'm going to try to, uh, you know, take one for the team. I'm going to try to binge watch uh, Daredevil Season 3. Uh, we're going to see what happens on this Doctor Who episode, which sounds awesome. Rosa. It's called Rosa. And then, uh, and then we'll be one week uh, closer to Halloween. So tune in next time on Nerd News Now.